Okay, so in this session, we're going to introduce you to parametric and non-parametric tests. So in this session, we're going to look at what are these things, these parametric and non-parametric tests, what are the assumptions of a parametric test, and we're going to look at SPSS and check out some of the assumptions, specifically using the Levine's test and the KS test. So let's look a bit more detail about what are parametric and non-parametric tests. So before explaining uh, this further, we need to consider what assumptions we're looking at. So when we're running an experiment, we hope to be we can actually generalize the findings that we collect from our small sample and see whether it reflects the entire population. And to do that, we need to make certain assumptions. And if these assumptions are met, then it means we can look at the p-value, the probability value that we get from our results, from SPSS, and maybe we can actually interpret this information and report it using our appropriate APA format. If these assumptions are not met, however, if or they're violated, then, what, then the p-value that we actually calculate or that SPSS gives us, the, we cannot trust. It will probably be inaccurate and it will probably lead us to the wrong conclusion. So parametric test is a basically a statistical test that makes certain assumptions about the population and its distribution. Non-parametric tests, for example, do not make those certain, same assumptions. All statistical tests are effectively assessing the null hypothesis significance test testing system. And we are still basically assessing whether the null hypothesis has been uh, rejected or accepted. So parametric and non-parametric tests are basically subtypes of a null hypothesis significant testing system. So what are the assumptions uh, that we have to be making when we're thinking about parametric tests? To try and make it a bit easier to understand, we've got an acronym here, okay? CHIN. Let's see if it actually helps you memorize these issues better. So the first thing we have to think about in terms of its assumption is continuous. This basically means that the dependent variable we're actually measuring people's behavior it only produces interval or ratio data. The second assumption is homogeneity of variance. This is to ensure that the differences between the variance of our groups is roughly equal. Another very important assumption regarding whether it's that we use a parametric or non-parametric test is that we must have independent data. This basically means that the data that we've actually collected uh, from one group does not interfere with another group. That's our third assumption. And finally, the last assumption is that we must have a normally distributed curve within our dependent variable. If either one of these uh, assumptions is violated, then we'll have to consider adjusting our results somehow or just using a non-parametric test that doesn't have those same assumptions. To check if the assumptions have actually been met, we can use uh, SPSS to help us analyze these tests. The first SPSS test that we're going to introduce here is the Levine's test. This is a test to assess the homogeneity of variance assumption. This is the second assumption of parametric testing. For this analysis test, if the, null, if the result that we get from a p-value from the Levine's test is more than 0.05, this indicates that it is not significant. That means that we can say that there is no differences between the variances between our two groups, and therefore the, the hum, assumption of uh, homogeneity of variance has actually been met. However, if the result came out and we have a p-value that is smaller than 0.05, this suggests that the Levine's test is significant. And in this case, what we are saying is that there is a difference in the variance between our two groups, and they, we have violated the assumption of homogeneity of variance. And for this, we need to actually adjust our results more carefully. Usually, the Levine's test appears alongside at the table that you get with its parametric test, for example, the t-test shown in this table. If we just focus on the Levine's test just for now, it's a significance value of 0.678. This means that the p-value is more than 0.05, and it is not significant. So that in this case, the assumption of equal variance has been assumed. We'll now move on to introduce you to another SPSS test called the Kolmogorov smirnov test, or KS test, we prefer to call it. The KS test checks for normality, which is the fourth assumption of the parametric test that we've introduced earlier. If the KS test shows a p-value of more than 0.05, which is not significant, then we say the distribution of scores does not differ from a normal curve, and the assumption of normality is met. If, however, we run our KS test and we get a p-value that is less than 0.05, this means it's significant, then we're saying that the distribution differs from a normal curve, and effectively we have violated that normality assumption. So let's give you an example. Let's say we'd like to see if running becomes more enjoyable with, with music. So we asked 12 participants to take part in both conditions of our experiment. One condition with no music, another with loud music. And then we asked them to report on their enjoyment levels when run, uh, running on a questionnaire. 
So to assess whether the scores are, have met our normal uh, distribution assumption, we need to run the KS test, the Kolmogorov Gorov Smirnov test. So once we've put all our data into SPSS, we need to work out how to check for normality. To do this, you need to click on the, on the buttons that says Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Explore. What happens then is a message box will appear, and from there you need to move all the variables to the dependent list. You then need to click Plots, select Histogram, and make sure you tick the box that says Normality and click Continue, because that's the box for a KS test. A te these tests of normality uh, will produce a, a normality table, and for now we're just going to focus on the Kolmogorov smirnov test. So if we look at the first row where it says no music, this is a significance value of 0 0.20, which is more than 0 0.05. This means that in this particular example the uh, normality assumption has been met. And if I show you the histogram, you can see that we have a normal distribution curve. The second row on the same table with a down that says loud music also uh, shows a, a significance value of 0 0.20, which again is more than 0 0.05. So in this case, the normality assumption is met again. And let's have a look how it looks on the histogram. 